All right. Hi, Claire. Hi, Kate. Anyone else who might be tuning in, welcome. Hope everyone can hear me okay. one so I'll get started. Hi anyone watching my name is Tim. Um, I'm a university library technician here at NC State University Libraries. I also take pictures in my spare time so I just wanted to kind of share my photo editing process with anyone that might be interested. I'm gonna do a small shameless plug for the libraries. Um, any people affiliated, students, faculty, staff, um, the libraries has a great technology lending program. Um, you can check out all types of equipment from like laptops to phone chargers um, and, and even cameras. Um, all of the pictures that we're going to edit today, I took on a Canon camera that I borrowed from the library about five years ago. This was my first year here at State. Um, I went to a New York trip uh, through the scholars program at State and I borrowed a camera for the week um, just to kind of take pictures of the city and, and stuff. So all of the pictures that you're about to see are photos from like five years ago. Um, this handsome gentleman here, random guy, I thought he had cool style. Um, so I just took a photo of him. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. Um, hmm. I'm glad your day is going well. Nice. I'll be periodically checking the chat. It's a little small on my phone, so um, I'll just be taking breaks then. So yeah, um, I personally edit photos using the Photos application that usually comes on any Mac computer, um, whether you have a laptop, whether you have a desktop. Um, photos should already be installed, so it is free. Um, if you don't have a MacBook or a Mac or anything, well, for one, you can always check out those items at the Ask Us desk at Hill Library. Um, but if you just don't prefer to use Mac, um, I only recently started using, using Photos. Um, prior to that, I was using the Visco app, if you're familiar. Um, that's V-S-C-O. Um, which I'm pretty sure, regardless of whatever phone you have, you can download Visco and um, just tweak photos on your phone, which I thought was a lot easier for a while. Um, but then I found Photos, the Photos app to be just as easy and, and get um, just as much of the point across, but I could kind of like dial in some extra stuff. Um, let's see. Make the old man look young with the power of Photoshop. I will try. I will try. Um, he's already doing a good job. His jacket's pretty fresh. I like the cross sling he's got on. The fedora is a cool touch. He's, he's looking like 25 easy. Um, so yeah, I'll just kind of start. Anytime I like take pictures, I'll like import them into photos, um, which is pretty easy to do. And then this is kind of like the layout that you're given. Um, if you just hit edit here, you'll be given all of these like different parameters. It may be the first time you open it, um, these drop down arrows won't be selected. So it might just look pretty bare bones, but if you click them all, you'll see you'll have a little bit more um, photo editing options, which is pretty cool. Um, you'll see like three um, like main tabs at the top, the adjust tab, the filters tab, and the crop tab. Um, these are if you just want to like straighten out your photo or add like a pre-installed filter like these, which, you know, they, they already do the job. They're looking pretty cool. Um, I tend not to use filters, but sometimes, you know, like that looks really nice. Like sometimes they can be handy. Um, the crop tab is really useful too if you would just like to, if you took a photo a little bit slanted and you just kind of want to get the angle right, um, you can dial this arrow right here and you can see how it um, kind of changes the, the dimensions of the photo, which is pretty cool. And you can actually change the dimensions with this like um, 
these corner tabs. Um, and if you don't like what you did, you can always just reset and it'll, it'll bring it back to normal. So I think for this photo in particular, I don't necessarily want to um, crop anything and I don't necessarily want to filter on it either. So I'll just go back to original. And we'll just start. I usually go through like all of the adjustments. Um, some of them, I'll admit, I don't really know what they do. Um, but that's kind of the fun of it. Like they're, everything's just a slider basically. So you can kind of just dial things in and dial them out. Um, see what's looking good, see what isn't looking good and, and kind of just go from there. Um, the beauty of photos too is that there's like auto features. So if you don't really know what something does, but you just kind of want to like see, for example, um, the software will actually like analyze your photo and try to give you what it thinks to be um, like the best settings for your photo. So I'll try that. Well, I'll try that with this wand tool up here in this top corner. It says auto enhance. If I click on it, it'll take a second. So it didn't really do too much. Um, it added a tiny bit of brightness to it and I can AB the original so you can kind of see, okay, it brought up some of like the background colors. It's not bad, like definitely something I can work with. And you can see here that like it's added um, settings to all of these sliders here. So if I were to unclick it, it'll just bring it back to normal and I can actually dial these in myself. I can kind of see, okay, what is Brilliance doing? It's kind of adding a lot of detail to like the background when I turn it up and then taking some of that out when I turn it back down. Same thing with exposure. You can see that it really like brightens the entire photo a little bit more dramatic dramatically than um, Brilliance does. Um, highlights is kind of taking the brightest portions of the photo and making them even brighter. Shadows is kind of self-explanatory. If you turn it down, it actually increases the shadows. If you turn it up, it decreases the shadows. Brightness, contrast, and this tool called black point, which I think I've learned to mean that, um, for example, if you have a high contrast photo, you can kind of adjust how dark the darkest points of the photo are. So if you turn the black point down, you can kind of see the contrast isn't as, um, contrasty um, but if you turn it up you can see that the dark portions are even more dark um, so it's just like a helpful tip to know um, if you see this like light meter right here you can actually dial this back and forth and it'll auto adjust all of the parameters at once to kind of edit everything um, kind of in sequence with each other which is helpful um, in certain cases I think for for this case in particular, um, I kind of just eyeball it. So I think I liked the photo, like the exposure that it was. It definitely seems to be bright enough. Um, I might want to add a little bit more black point just to like let this old guy stand out a little bit more. Um, and I kind of just, yeah, like it really is just kind of a feel thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert when it comes to photo editing. I just know what I like to see and what colors I want to pop out. So I kind of just like edit towards that. Um, I'm checking the chat real quick. Any of y'all seen the newest Adventure Time special? I have not, um, but Adventure Time's cool. Um, it's pretty good and sad. Gotcha. So yeah, I'll go into like the colors option too. Um, this is pretty useful. I actually like the colors option on photos a lot because if you dial it in, I feel like most like saturation type tools are very dramatic. Like, and this one can get dramatic. If I, if I dial it all the way up, it's like, you know, it starts to orange out his skin and, um, make things look a little unrealistic, but it, it works within a pretty subtle margin, which I like. Um, so if I dial it in a bit, it's not so overblown, but it is kind of bringing a little bit more pop to the colors, which I think is really cool. Um, so yeah, and, and these, like, you can dial the color settings as a whole, and it'll kind of adjust everything. Or you can just adjust, like, just the contrast and see what that does. So you can see that makes a huge difference as far as, like, 
um, the background colors, the blues in the photo, um, or you can just adjust the saturation. So you can kind of just determine like what feels right for the photo. I think I actually like um, boosting the saturation and the contrast in this one. So that's starting to look really good. Um, black and white, I typically don't use unless like I want to use black and white. Um, but it does kind of a similar thing. You can adjust like which portions of the photo are white, which portions of the photo are black and kind of see how that's changing the image over time. So um, it's a cool feature, yeah. I, I tend not to use it, but it's cool. Um, retouch, I will admit that's one of the ones I, I don't really know what it does. Um, but it says click and drag over spots to remove. So I guess this is like more, um, Oh, well, there you go. It can kind of like blur out portions of a photo. I guess you can adjust like the pen size. So this is, I guess, helpful for like if you had some personal information that you didn't want people to notice in the photo, you could kind of blur it out, click away, and, and it does that, which is pretty neat. Um, so I don't necessarily need that for this photo. So this little tiny arrow will undo, which is great. Or I could just uncheck the box. Um, red eye is for, usually for like flash if I take um, a picture of someone with the flash on sometimes it, it catches red in their eye so you can take that out that way um, I use black white to check contrast nice yeah there there's definitely a lot of cool parameters to like mess around with um, in any photo editing software um, the white balance options are cool you can just auto white balance and it'll kind of um, give you something to work with. This one made it a little bit more cool, which I actually kind of like. Um, the temperature is a little bit more blue, but I can always dial it back down too. And there's different white balance options. So there's one adjusted to skin tone, temperature, and neutral gray. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what these three mean, but I can kind of see like how they um, manipulate the photo. So I can dial back a little bit more um, cool tones into this photo, and I actually do kind of like that. It's got a hint of warm, but like it's a little bit cool too, which works well with his jacket and his persona entirely, so it's cool. Um, let's see, I didn't know about the blurring feature sounds. Yeah, it is, it is actually like pretty useful. Um, I only just learned about it as I'm like going through this right now, so there's definitely some other cool features. Um, Curves, I feel like I tend to stray away from just because I don't know too much about um, RGB curves, but if you're more experienced with like, usually like Adobe Suite softwares work with curves a lot, um, and I think they're just ways to like fine tune your photo a little bit more. Um, but for this one, I think I'll just hold off. Um, and then the levels option, I also don't really know what it does. But anytime I hit auto, it'll usually brighten up the photo a little bit more, which can come in handy because it like, I'm not really sure what it does, but it adds brightness to the photo typically um, without like increasing the exposure. So you get like a nicer, brighter image, but it's not necessarily like overblown. So sometimes if like the photo I took just isn't that great um, or the lighting just wasn't like optimal, I'll sometimes use the auto level option and it, it can brighten it up. In this example, it doesn't seem to have really done anything, which is fine. Um, so I usually just leave it. And then one of the biggest heavy hitters of this software is the selective color option. This one's really, really cool. I find myself like immersed in this um, parameter the most. Let me check the chat. Curves are complicated. Yeah, I, I bet. Um, I don't fully get it. Um, so yeah, the selector, selective colors palette is really cool. You can see they kind of give you some um, options here, red, yellow, green, cyan, like a dark blue, and like a magenta. Um, so let's say, well, let's start with red. So we have some like red present here in his jacket. There's a little bit of red in his face. There's some red like in these background street signs. Um, so what's cool is you can adjust like the hue, the saturation and luminance for just the color red in the photo. Um, 
So just for example, I'll beef up the saturation for red and you can see it made some like pretty dramatic differences to his face. The zipper is like super bright. Um, this street sign in the background got super bright. The hand signs in the back got super bright. Um, but it's only affecting the color red. So that can be really, really useful um, if there's a color that's standing out the most that you want to stand out even more. Um, when I was editing my friend's grad pictures, they were all wearing um, red gowns and this was a really fun feature to use um, to make their gowns stand out a little bit more. Let's see. I think levels lowers the threshold so like lightens the darkest point and darkens the lightest point. Yeah, that that is pretty much how I'd describe it. Um, and it does so in a really like subtle but effective way. So it, yeah, it kind of works out that way. Um, definitely a useful tool here. Um, so for, I guess like the selective color palette, I'll, I usually try to start with the colors that I see most and then just kind of work, work around there. So there's a lot of blue in this photo. So I think I'm gonna go to like this light blue and see what my options are. So if I saturate it, that's already making his jacket pop out a little bit more. And the fun thing about like photo editing is that if you, or I guess the interesting thing about it is like if you dial in things a little bit, you know, almost timidly, you can't really see what's happening. But if you bring things to like an extreme, you know, like that's super extreme, but then kind of like dial the points back or like you know mess with things a little bit more like from an extremity to a point of like realism it makes it a little bit easier to kind of gauge what you actually do like to see versus um you know versus just dialing things in a little bit and not really being able to tell um so saturation yeah it's just saturating the blues the hue can give me either like a greenish tint, as you can see, or like a darker blue tint. I kind of like the nat like more on the natural side, but maybe a little bit darker blue. Um, the luminance is really cool. It, it's basically like the exposure for the blue, so I can get like a really light blue or really dark blue. Um, I kind of like this dark blue contrast, so I think I'll just stick with that. I kind of dial it out a little bit more just to see like how far I can push it. I think that might be a little much, so dial it back in a bit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm liking that, that blue tone a lot. So then I'll go back to red. Um, this red has a hue palette of like magenta, so it gets kind of crazy to like yellow. Um, so this can be helpful if like, um, it's like really bright and it's kind of like, the sun's kind of like washing out your subject, you can add a little bit more like natural flush um, to skin tones, which is nice. So I don't wanna like fully um, blow out his face or anything. So that, that looks really nice and like a natural warm skin tone. But I've still got the blues, you know, from this adjustment. So I, I still get like the best of both worlds, which is really nice. Um, I kind of like this yellow popping out from the bike in the background, so I'm just going to mess with that for a little bit. And there's other, yeah, like, so that's like an obvious yellow, but there's other, like, yellows in the photo that you can see kind of, like, change when I mess with the parameters. Um, so, yeah, it's always just fun to, like, see what colors you can get to stand out the most. Um... And you can always check your original work. Um, there's a revert to original button, which has um, harmed my process a lot because it's way bigger and I tend to just erase all of my photos immediately. But this um, button right here can show you what it was and then what it is now. So we definitely, you can see like, added a lot of nice cool colors, brought them out more um, while still kind of like keeping the photo intact and not blowing it up too much. Um, and then sometimes I'll just go back and like mess with something I did before just to kind of see like what looks the nicest. I like that. Um, yeah, that's looking good. Uh, and then the last, uh, well, there's a couple other options, noise reduction, sharpen. I tend to not use those just because 
I don't fully know what they do. And my kind of rule of thumb is if I can't see the change, I just don't add it. Um, so I can't necessarily see the change with noise reduction. Um, I'll try sharpen. Um, kind of a being it here with this check mark. I don't necessarily see the change. Maybe it's something I'd have to like zoom in for. Um, oops, too far. But yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily, oh, I can kind of see it. I actually kind of can see it. If we like zoom into like the jacket edge, you can kind of see like these small details right here get a little bit more defined. Um, so I mean, I personally don't think it makes an insane amount of difference, but if it, if, if that detail matters to you, then that option's there. Um, and you should definitely explore it. And check the chat. Uh, gotta get that teal jacket to stand out. Yeah, it's it's really cool. I, I like his shirt too. Um, he was working with a lot here. Sharpen would make blurred things more visible, and noise reduction is reducing pixelation. Nice. I'm I'm glad we have photo editing experts in the chat, because um, it just helps this be a little bit more informative. Um, so yeah, and then the last perimeter I usually will mess with is vignetting. Um, you can auto vignette. I feel like it almost never gets it to what I like. I think, I personally think like that, like very evident vignetting. I don't know. It's just not a look I typically go for, but some people like it. So I think that's fine. Um, the like different, there's only three parameters, so it's like pretty easy to manipulate. Um, the strength is basically just like how dark or light the um, edges of the picture are. So if I beef it up, it gets like super apparent. If I bring it back down, it gets like very bright around the edges. Um, so I might add like a little bit of vignetting and then change the radius, which is just how close into the center of the photo it's getting. Um, so I usually turn the radius down like pretty significantly just to get like a slight vignetting but nothing crazy and I'll add softness too so that the edges aren't like super like apparent um, and sometimes I'll even add brightness to the photo just because depending on the context it can be nice to like see a full bright image as opposed to like um, a bright center of an image and then like dark corners um, but I think since we have such a defined subject here that it might be better to add a subtle vignette. So I'll do about there and that looks good. Maybe add a little bit more black point. And then yeah, usually once I get the colors right, I just kind of go back and mess around with the lighting just to see if I can get anything else to pop a little bit more without overblowing the photo. Um, but yeah, that, that looks good to me. And if we A, B it, we can kind of see where we started, where we've ended up. Maybe I'll turn the saturation down a tiny bit just to make it a little bit more, yeah. Like not too overblown, but still, still looking nice. Um, let's see, I might mess with the greens a little bit just to see what we can do there. Like I said, I'll usually start pretty extreme and then just try to like dial stuff back. So like the street poles, we can see, we can mess with those colors. I think I'll dial it back. Yeah. Let's check the chat. Looks way clear now. Yeah, like I never really noticed, like I think I would just look at the soda and be like, oh yeah, it looks nice, but like once you really like start getting into the different colors, like you can see how much of a dramatic, dramatic difference um, it ends up making. So um, photo, photo editing is definitely a cool and useful tool and just kind of fun um, to take a picture that you already had a connection with and kind of give it new life. Um, Cause these photos at this point are like five years old. So it's kind of cool to like dive back in and, and see what, what these photos could mean now. Um, so I'm personally happy with this. I think I'll just leave this one as is. Sometimes I'll come back, um, and like, if I'm doing like a s set of photos, I'll like 
go edit a few, come back and be like, oh, okay, I, I think I got better colors on this one. Let me try to like readjust this one to match. Um, and speaking of matching, Photos also has a really useful tool where if you go back into the editing view and you right click, I found this out way too late, unfortunately, but still very useful. You can copy adjustments um, and then it'll copy all of the setting parameters that you've used. And if you have a picture that looks pretty similar in like exposure and setting, you can just paste those adjustments onto that picture in the same editing view. Um, so it can save you a lot of time, which is really useful. Photos, unlike like Lightroom or like higher end, more expensive photo editing softwares, doesn't have the capability to save um, LUTs, which if you don't know what that means, I honestly forget like what it stands for, but it's basically like a color profile or like a filter that you make that you can just drop onto all of your photos and like give them a similar look and feel. Um, so photos does not have the ability to like save color profiles, but I think being able to copy um, photo adjustments is, is a pretty fair consolation. Let me check the chat. Amazing. Thank you. So we'll go on to the next one. All these were in New York. This one was from the top of the um, One World building, like where the um, Twin Towers used to be. Um, I love being able to manipulate like anything with water or sky. I just like anything with like water, sky, greenery, like all of that stuff. Um, I just love being able to like make blues or greens pop. Um, so yeah, let's see what we're working with here. Um, sometimes as like a starting point, I'll just do auto enhance just to see what the software is thinking. And honestly, that looks pretty nice. Like I kind of like what it did there just to AB it. Um, so yeah, it can, it can save you some time and give you a nice like starting point if it feels overwhelming to like dive into every parameter. So I might up the brilliance a little bit. Um, wow, that's looking really nice. Um, I think I'll leave the light alone for now just because I'm liking how it looks so much. Um, maybe up the saturation a tiny bit. Um, I think I'll just jump honestly straight into colors just to see what I can manipulate there. So kind of check the hue to see what colors are being picked up. I think I want to saturate this a little bit more and maybe bring it more towards the green because I really like that. But I'll check blue too. So that's what it looks like at its most like blue, at its most green. And I'm definitely vibing with the green more. So I'll just dial that back down. And let's see with luminance, how bright we can make it. Ooh, that looks nice. That like dark, almost like jade green. I really like that. Let's see what we can adjust here. Okay, so this is adjusting a lot of the like building shadows. Um, so this one might be more of like a stylistic approach because obviously these buildings don't look that green. Um, but I kind of like the like style that it's giving off. So I might just lean into it a little bit just for the sake of it. Um, but I'll just, I'll leave it like that for right now um, and come back. Let's mess with the levels. Okay, so the levels, wow. Added a lot of um, just contrast, I think, but I kind of like that because it makes the sun, this the spots that are hit by the sun pop out a little bit more, which actually do kind of like this almost looks like like a film photo or something I honestly think I try to edit my pictures to look like they were taken on film um, it's kind of like my guide I guess I think the temperature tool might be helpful here or like the white balance tool just to see uh, that made it a little too cool let's see so I don't know if you can see, like whenever I change these white balance settings, it like very slightly affects the temperature. I guess I haven't hit auto or anything, but they seem to have their own like profiles here. So I'm liking what skin tone's doing. 
I might want to add, a, yeah, just a tad bit more warmth. Um, let's see, that make it cool. Yeah, I think I like right about there. Actually, I, I can't really tell because the warmth will like orange out the water a little bit and I really like the color of the water. I like this cooler temperature, but I do like how the sun makes the building look um, with a little bit more warmth. So I'll probably just keep it in the middle, maybe a little bit towards the cool side because um, my eye is drawn to the water, but I think the building still looks nice there. The ocean color makes everything else good. Yeah, it really does. I like the pop of red and yellows against the sea. Yeah, so that's a good point. Let's see what we can do with the, maybe like the red of this building, if we can get that to pop a little more. So just kind of go crazy with it. Okay, so now we can see luminance, what that's doing, the areas that's affecting. Um, so I'll bring the saturation down a little bit. But I, I really like how this is looking. Um, and then I think I do want to mess with the vignetting since there's so much natural vignetting just from the photo itself. kind of want to see what we could do to maybe even just like brighten up the photo a little bit more. Um, yeah, that looks cool. And I can A, B it to see. Okay, that's the natural vignetting, which does look nice. Maybe, maybe it wouldn't be so necessary in this, in this specific photo. Or maybe I'll just dial back a tiny bit. Nothing, like very subtly. I kind of like that. Anyone in the chat have any suggestions for anything they would like to see? I can mess with the saturation a little bit. That looks, that looks wild. I think darkening the shadow of the building would make it more natural. That's a good point. Let me try messing with the shadow parameter. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely making the the contrast between like the dark parts of the building and the sun pop out a little more, but like in a very cool way. I think I might wanna, yeah, I definitely wanna bump the exposure up just a hair, just so it's not so dark of a photo. That's, that's looking, or actually, up the black point, I think that's what I wanted to do. So I kind of wanted to take a little bit of those shadows out so it wasn't so dark of an image, but upping the black point kind of makes the already darker points darker. So it's kind of like adding a different type of contrast is the way that I, I'm looking at it a bit. Um, but yeah, I, I like this a lot. And just to A-B it, this is where we were and this is where we are now. That looks... That looks solid. I think I might leave that as is, unless anyone has any other um, comments, but I'll give a second um, if anyone thinks of anything, but I like that a lot. Thanks, Claire. Yeah, this is honestly like, very relaxing for me. It's just like, A, just kind of fun to look back on photos I'd either forgotten I'd taken or just like take me back to like a different point in my life. And then like, yeah, being able to give them a new sense of life is, is always fun. So I'll probably move on. I'm, I'm definitely liking how that is. Um, so these are our two photos we've got this far. Let's move on. This one is also, I think, from the World Trade Center. I just kind of like the dynamics of the photo, like the scroll and like the baseball field in the back and these cars, like it's kind of dizzying in a way, but it looks pretty cool. I have to try photos editing on my work. Yeah, go for it, honestly. I, the fact that this is like free or at least free with like Mac programs, like free is always a win for me. Um, so this one might be a difficult one to dial in everything perfectly just because there's such an extreme contrast between this girl who isn't lit up and 
um, everything that's happening in the background. But if anything, like, you know, that that's kind of another, like, I guess, learning lesson when photo editing. Like, not every photo is perfectly taken. Not every photo has, like, the perfect exposure. And not every photo has to look amazing either. But there's usually still something you can do to kind of, like, add some color or some visual visually ap appealing element um, that looks nice to you and, and just make it a little bit more um, dialed into, like, your taste than, like, what it looks like when it came out of the camera. So, I mean, even still, we're already getting, you know, a nice bit of pop from the green. The sun's a little bit more um, saturated. I'm going to up the saturation a little bit. That actually might be too much. I won't mess with the lighting too much here just because um, I don't want to blow it out already more than it's kind of pushing right now. I might zero out the exposure just to get this okay. And actually... I might use the crop tool here um, just to kind of center the photo a little bit. I only got half of that person, but I do kind of like the cars in the back. So I might leave it at about there. Yeah, that looks nice. Um, and there's like more of a defined subject now. Um, so let's see. I guess my first instinct is just to want to mess with those greens um, because I love being able to like blue out greens and just make them pop a little bit more. Kind of like reminds me of being a kid and like thinking our planet was healthy, even though it might not have been. I was a little too real, but um, yeah, I just kind of messed. I did that really quickly, but. I usually just start getting in like a zone and like clicking around just to see like what is happening, what's doing what. So I just kind of like wanted to brighten up the edges of the photo a little bit more just to like make her face a little more like, or just to make her a little bit more part of the subject um, as opposed to just the background. But it's looking like the highlights here are a little, little extreme. So I'm going to try to dial those back. My rule of thumb for highlights in particular is like if anything like super bright is happening in just a part of your picture, it's more than likely the highlights. So if you dial it back, it kind of just dulls them out. So it's not like almost blinding you when you're looking at it, but it still looks like, you know, um, somewhat realistic and somewhat like all in the same color palette as opposed to something just getting like completely thrown out by the sun. Um, so I'm liking that. I don't think there's too much I can do with this one. Um, but just to kind of get a, a general sense of the colors, maybe I could try seeing what um, I can do with the reds. Yeah, it kind of gives a little more color to this building back here, which is nice. Let's see what to do with the blues. Kind of bring them out a little. Let's see what's in the comments. Tim Streams. What's up? How's it going? Tim Streams. I do stream. All right. Um, yeah, that's looking like fine enough to me. I don't think every every picture has to be a masterpiece, but I kind of like, I like the overall look of this one. Um, if I wanted to, I could like mess around with the brightness a little bit more, but Again, I don't really want to, like, blow it out. Um, so I think I might just leave it like that. Um, a good tip is you can, I mean, just like anything, you can undo or redo changes. Um, so unless you hit done, you can pretty much just, like, go through all of the changes. And there's shortcuts for that, Command-Z or um, Shift-Command-Z to redo. This one's like another overhead shot. The lighting's a little bit more uniform here, which would be nice. So I'll just try auto editing and see what that does. Again, really great. Um, already just like brings in a lot of like natural light and color. Uh, I'm immediately gravitated towards the blues. So I'm gonna try to see what I can do with those. I tend to like greening out my blues and like making them a little bit more dark and rich. Um, 
you may have a different preference and that's like the fun of it just kind of figuring out what shades of what colors you like to see the most i definitely like bluing out my greens kind of ironically um i think i want to make these oops i want to make these trees pop a little bit hmm. and sometimes i can't ever really decide like i kind of like these bright trees and i kind of like the look of the dark trees too so usually if I can't decide it I just try to do somewhere in the middle um, let's see the vignetting yeah it's looking nice maybe mess with the red lines in the Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think I like that. Um, and you'll, like, as you edit photos more, how you edit, like, scenery photos is probably going to be a lot different than how you edit, like, portrait photos, um, just because you have, like, different things that you're keeping in mind. Like, scenery is kind of just, like, whatever colors look nice to you, you can kind of just mess around with, but... Um, uh, portrait photos it's more like you're trying to make sure that they're not washed out like their face is coming through clearly and is well lit and stuff like that and I, I should have some portrait photos in here ooh that saturation is that's nice that's nice yeah I definitely want to beef up the contrast a little cut back down a little so yeah that's looking good um this cast feature is interesting. It kind of messes with the temperature. Um, so it can kind of give like a vintagey feel. And in some photos I've taken, it adds like these little white grains or specks to your image. It's kind of hard to see in this one, or maybe it doesn't do it in this one. Um, but it can kind of give it like a vintagey, like this almost looks like, I don't know, something out of like a magazine from the 60s or something. So it's a cool little feature. It's not as dramatic as like the white balance or temperature features, um, but it can just add a little pizzazz to the photo. I kind of do like that warmer temperature, but I also like the cooler temperature. So I'll probably leave it in the middle or maybe I'll add a little bit more cool. Just check the chat. That green in the field really makes it true, true, very true. Um, mess with the brilliance a little. Yeah, I do. I do like bright. I like bright, happy. That's, that's what I go for. I like the bright and happy. All right. I'll probably leave it like that. I think that's looking, yeah, I, I'm seeing the colors I want to see. So that's pretty much it. Um, I could edit this one, but I feel like we've done quite a few like scenery ones. So I'll try to find a subject one. Ooh, there we go. It's a little honeybee. So immediately, well, let's just auto adjust and see. Yeah, auto adjust for, and you'll you'll find, I feel like for some cameras, the auto adjust feature or like the profile that, the color profile that your camera will spit out will somehow just work really well with the auto enhance feature in photos. My personal camera that I use is a Sony and I feel like the auto enhance sometimes gets it, but more often than not misses the mark. But it seems like for these Canon cameras that we have at the library, the auto enhance is just like super on point, which is nice. Um, so yeah, let's mess with these greens. I def ooh yeah, ooh yeah. That's that's it. That's it. I love that like blue green, blue green look. Can mess. I can literally change the color of the flower like entirely which is kind of funny I almost forget what the original color is so maybe I, I lean a little bit more towards the actual color yeah that looks nice let's see what we can do with this honeybee Ooh, that's pretty that is pretty My AB. It literally, like, everything looks brown now, and, like, you don't even really think about it until you're done editing, and you're like, wait, what? That's 
that's crazy. Like my eyes didn't see anything wrong with this original photo until I color edited it, and I was like, oh wait, this is we we have something here. Um, so I want to cut down on that hue just a little bit. Cut down on the saturation just a little bit. Um, let's see. Honestly, yeah, I, I really could leave it at this. I could just mess with, like, the brilliance a little bit. Maybe add a little bit more contrast, but not too much. Wild. Literally wild, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um, honestly, I, I like that. I, I don't really feel like it needs more tune up. Um, so I think I might just leave it as that. Um, yeah, that looks good. Let's see. This is, there's a lot of interesting colors with this one. So we'll give this a shot. This is, um, the high line. If if you've never been to New York or want to go, you should definitely check it out. Um, it's a really cool, like, I think it's like a repurposed, like, um, old railway line or something that they turned into, like, a greenery walkway space. And there's some, like, cool buildings, almost like Meet the Robinsons, if anyone's familiar with that movie. We get that vibe. Um, but, yeah, Auto Enhance doing wonders again. Immediately, I'm drawn to the sky. I want to like green that out a little bit, saturate it some more. And sometimes these like greens don't like fully like the selective colors that you have don't fully um, register the colors that are in the photo. And I th I want to say this eyedrop tool lets you like. Let me try. So like I got brown now. Whoa, but it made everything like super purple. So you can like, if you don't want the color palette here, you can select photos within the, um, within your actual photo to like manipulate the saturation of those. I'm gonna undo all that because I don't necessarily want to do that. Um, but just kind of to show. Yeah, that's that's looking gorge. Definitely want to blow out those greens. Yep. Yep, that's my stuff. That is my stuff. And let's mess with the brilliance a little. It's a lot going on, so I might try to add some more shadows just to kind of dull some stuff out. Um, maybe desaturate it a tiny bit. Yeah, it's a railway turned back, really amazing landscape. It really is, yeah. It's a very cool spot. If you ever get to go to New York, you should definitely check out the High Line. Um, and maybe I will add some vignetting to this one, um, just to kind of help the eye like focus on something a little bit more, um, just because it is it is a lot of bright color, um, but I mean, it's all up to personal preference. I think, yeah, I think that looks great. Um, so I'll probably leave it at that. Is there anything else that I, uh, I I'm, I'm seeing the colors I want to see, so I think it works out. Ooh, this like, a cargo ship. I don't even know. This I think was on a ferry ride. I want to say to like, I don't even remember where. There's so many like ferries that you can take in New York. Um, there's a free one, the Staten Island Ferry, that runs like every 30 minutes. You can just take it. You don't have to have like a pass or a ticket or anything. It's a cool, fun, free thing to do if you end up there. Um, Interesting colors here. Obviously, a lot of blues. Let's see what we can do there. Um, yeah, those are making like really dramatic differences. Um, I kind of want to get that orange to pop. So let's see if we can do that. Mm. 
And I think it says on the screen, but if anyone has any like questions, feel free to feel free to let me know. Um, let's see. Let's see how bright I can get it before it's like unbearable. Yeah, I, I like it around there. And I want to say these like RGB curves kind of show you like the color spectrum of, um, you know, what your, where your colors are. So like, I guess if it peaks, that means that there's like some overexposure in the photo, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but it could be a helpful tool. Like if you're like, I can't tell if this is like a little bit overkill, like you can at least view these and kind of see like where the range of your colors are landing which is cool um let's see let's see what green i can do yeah i'm liking the gradient standing out a little bit more in the sky there's a little bit more green up here the ocean's a little bit more blue down here Maybe. Yeah, that's looking nice. That is looking nice. And I like the reds popping out a little bit more on the cargo ship. That looks cool. Um, this one could probably benefit from a little bit of vignetting. Yeah, something, again, just like very subtle. At least that's how I, I prefer my vignettes to look. Oops. Um, so yeah, that, that honestly looks good to me. Um, I kind of just get into flow and, you know, I'll mess with certain things. Oh, wait, it's kind of wild. Yeah, that is some cool, some cool color. Yeah, I kind of just get into flow and after a while, just literally start to adjust whatever makes more sense. Um, let's see. Do you like taking portraits or landscapes? From That's a good question. Um, mm. I don't know. I think I do gravitate more towards taking portraits, even though I have been showing a lot of landscapes, just because it's like much more of like a personal experience, and it's more often than not with like my friends or people that I'm close with so like there's a little bit more of like a, um, a sentimental value associated with it but I do love capturing like different scenery or like things happening um, or just like a frame of like a much larger picture but just capturing like you know something small that's happening um, so yeah I, I definitely appreciate landscapes for just like the visually appealing stuff that's happening, but I think portraits are a little bit more like sentimental to me. So I'd probably say portraits. Let's see, just making sure we're good on everything. <laughs> this is a guy that um, asked me to take his picture um, so I took his picture and I don't think he ever got it, but <laughs> I think he just saw that I had like my camera out, um, and wanted me to take a picture. So I took a picture of him. So we'll do him some justice and try to add some color to his photo. And I think this will be my last one for right now, but if anyone viewing this is enjoying this, um, please let me know. And I, I would love to, I, I think I'll try to do these somewhat regularly because um, I, I find enjoyment in them um, and if they're helpful then I'll be more than happy to keep doing them ooh saturation looking looking very nice um, so it's already giving a lot of natural colors these blues are like pretty intense um, or just prevalent so I might try to green them out a little just because that's the look that I like yeah, that's looking nice. I think I'll cut back on some of these highlights a little bit. 
and up the exposure just so his face doesn't get too washed out from the sun um, already that's looking like pretty solid I might mess with the shadows a little bit more just to see what that's doing and add a tiny bit of saturation to his face there's some brightness there And I think I will slap a little bit of vignetting on here. And that that's looking that's looking pretty nice. If we A B it yeah, it brings out like a cool pop of blue. <laughs> Slap that vignette, yeah. Um, let's see, we can mess with these a little bit just to see. And I, I like that. Um, I might mess with like the yellow. tiny, tiny things. AB it again. Yeah, that's looking pretty solid to me. I'm definitely seeing a lot of the colors that like I want to see um, that are like coming out um, in the building. It's a little bit more of a greenish blue. Um, his face is bright, but it's not blown out. So we get a lot of like his expression it could benefit from some cropping just to like make him more of the center of the photo. So let me try doing that. And these grid lines are helpful too. Um, let me see if I can get back to that. Um, this is the rule of thirds grid. Um, State of exposure actually has a video on what rule of thirds is and like how to use them when you're taking a photo. Um, but you can always crop things to like make them fit into the rule of thirds. So um, it's basically just these three lines going across, or two lines going across, two lines going down, and then everything on the border of the photo. Um, and you kind of want your subject somewhere along those grid lines, usually in the center, but you can add like different, you can add, you can adjust how you take a picture or how you crop it um, to give like more dynamic interest to the photo. So I think that looks good. And yeah. I have no idea where this guy is today, but um, I hope I hope he remembers that I took his photo. I think you might be able to see me <laughs> sitting down in the lens of this photo. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna stop it there. Um, yeah, next time I guess we can we can edit these couples, random couples that I. Um, happened to photograph while I was there. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching. This was like super fun. Um, I really enjoy doing this. So if you like this kind of content, um, feel free to let me know if this is helpful. Um, again, just plugging Library Tech Lending. It's a great, great resource. Um, if you're affiliated with NC State, it's, it's one of the best things you can do for not only saving money, but just getting access to equipment that you wouldn't even necessarily think to check out or think to interact with. Um, so please definitely feel free to check the library's website, um, lib.ncsu.edu, um, and there's plenty of information on, on our technology lending program there. And then also check out State of Exposure. It's an, an, init, an initiative started by um, Megan Otto, who is a photo expert um, study photography in school and her and some colleagues and I have been like collaborating on making instructional and edu educational videos about photography um, tips and tricks to like improve um, the quality of your photos and stuff like that um, so definitely feel free to check out State of Exposure um, but other than that yeah I think that's it um, so thank you thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time